Hi there, I'm Dr. Cassie Preston. Today we're going to be discussing going beyond the X and O's so we can master the soft skills of leadership and mental toughness. All right, and let's dive right in with this. The main concept that we're talking about is, you know, the best coaches versus the worst coaches. And a really simple exercise to get you reflecting on what we're covering today is think of the worst coach you've ever had, right? <laughs> like the worst leader, the worst um, teacher, or even if, uh, if you haven't had that many coaches. And there's usually going to be signs of these interpersonal or soft skills about favoritism, dictator, poor communication. And then when we flip the discussion, you go think about your best coach, one that inspired you the most, that you really love the most, or the greatest experience, or best teacher, etc. What do we then think of? Again, the interpersonal skills. They're caring, they're honest, how they communicated, how they interacted with you. And so the bottom line then when reflecting on is, how can we become more of this best coach? How can we invest more of our time and energy focusing on these soft skills of leadership and mindset so we get the most out of our athletes and give them the best experience that they can have? So that's what we're talking about. And there's two subcategories that I want to explain that we'll dive in today. One is mindset. And one of the ways is really simple to think of this, and especially for athletes, is Everyone's got their car. That's your skill and your speed. So a lot of our athletes have a great car. They're fast. They're skilled. They know the game. But what about their driver? And is the driver focused, confident, or is it playing safe and scared and hesitant? And there's all this noise. And you need both. And when we talk about mental toughness and our mindset today, we're focused on working on the driver and the soft skills of the driver so you can get the most out of your car. And this is crucial with today's athletes. So that's going to be strategies. One will be related to that. And then strategies two are then once we get the most out of an athlete or, or a group of athletes, how can we get one plus one to equal three? This is this team cohesion. This is the leadership aspect where we all kind of rise above and you get that overall great experience and enjoyment as a team. And so those are the two strategies that we'll dive into to again, help you be the best coach, best leader, uh, get the most out of your teams. Why am I talking about this? What's my story? Well, I came across in hockey myself. I'm from North Bay, Ontario. I was fortunate enough to get drafted. I got to play five years of junior, a little bit of pro and five years of university hockey. But throughout my career, I really learned the importance of the mental side of the game. I'd have games where things would go well, and then I'd be a disaster and lose confidence. And I'd go on a hot streak and then a cold streak and had fun and successful years and really tough years. Um, and then as well as that, I got into coaching as well and leadership and all these other soft skills and really started to understand the impact that it had. And so I've had great mentors, and that's what's now leading me to do the work that I do now, which is all about mental toughness and leadership with athletes and coaches. So let's dive in to what we're going to be covering today. There's three areas to work on with the driver. There's the assessment. How can we make it real so we can you know, increase our awareness? Then there's the strategies, the bread and the butter we'll talk about. And then there's the habits, the third um, step to have this compound effect and make these skills and mindsets last. So we get the most out of that car. This is why and how we're going to work on the driver. The way to think of the assessment is pretty straightforward. Getting the most out of your car is having consistent elite performance. That's the name of our business. That's what we focus a lot on. And to get the most out of your driver is being in the zone. What percentage of time and energy in the zone? We have assessments that we have athletes reflect on their consistency here. And these things go hand in hand. The consistency of how you get out of the your car is the consistency that you get in the zone as the driver. And then we break down the driver uh, in the zone into these five pillars. And that's your ability to focus, focus on the process and block out distractions, your ability to stay composed and manage your emotions and not get too high and too low. Then there's your ability to be resilient and deal with adversity and tough times and things not going your way. And also your you know, fourthly, your ability to be confident and have an accurate self-image, not tied to external things and worry about what other people think. This is a big one a lot of people struggle with. And on a foundational level is intrinsic motivation. Are you internally driven in enjoyment and love the game? Um, and sometimes athletes are too extrinsically motivated and that can lead to some problems. So these are all these different components and they all interact to get to the zone and to performance. And so when you're thinking about yourself as a leader and your own mindset and communicating with your athletes, you know, doing assessments, doing some of our programs or, or whatever it be is better understanding what it is we're working on. Cause if you don't know what you're working on, that's hard to work on. And so we're working on the driver and this is what it's all about. Now the how is a really cool way um, is a really important way. And a cool way to do it is this diagram, which in short is there's the results, right? Consistent performance, getting the most out of your car. So you got your potential and assertive uh, versus in, you know, underperforming stress. 
And it's the mindset that we're working on that we just talked about and we assess in the zone versus in your own head, doubt, worry, frustration, confident, driven, focused, composed. But the how is um, down here. And a lot of people think the how is just, well, stop worrying and be confident. And like, <laughs> just don't do that and don't overthink and just be simple and focus on the process. That's not the how. That is the mindset result. That's what we're working on. That's the driver, the, the, the result of the driver. But how do we actually work on the mindset, on the driver? And there's two cool ways to, to break this down. Our energy and focus can be directed into judgments, okay? Quick fixes, looking for just like quick little things and not doing the work consistently and staying focused on everything's just about results. And so, and we feel like success is about results and we start to glorify results. And this is problematic. And this is what most of us do, which is why we get in our own head and then we underperform. And what we're gonna dive into just a little bit right now is the reset routine, okay? Reflection and mental prep. And the bottom line again, are these are the how, the strategies that you have to understand and apply. And I don't have the bandwidth to go through these in too much depth today because I wanna make sure to cover both concepts and for the, for the time, that I have, but the idea is you need to know how to clear your mind or the athletes need to know how to accept and let things go. And so they need to have routines that this is for during practices and games that blocks out the distractions that puts them focused on the process that, you know, lets go of worrying about what other people think and remembers that their opinion of themselves matters most. And so the reset routine and having a routine before, during um, that works for you using deep breathing, accepting, letting go is really important. So that gives you concepts there. Reflection is huge. It is one of the things that you do to work on the driver, right? It's pretty obvious what to do to work on the car, right? To get stronger, you got to go to the gym. To work on your shot or your skills, you got to get repetitions in. But how do we work on the driver? Reflecting is huge because as we self-reflect, we become more self-aware. We get better at self-correcting. And then thirdly, mental prep is like, what are we doing before games and practices to get mentally prepared, to get what routines do we have? What use of imagery? And we've got um, in our podcast, like imagery scripts for forwards, D and goalies. And they're really simple ways to get consistently mentally prepared. And then when you do these three things consistently, it creates this upward spiral to become your best self, to get into the zone, to get the most out of the driver and most out of your car. So that is the how. This is the bread and the butter. There's other things we teach, but I kind of give you a good insight into the strategies that you want to know and understand and be able to push athletes and encourage them and guide them to work on. And then to make them a habit, because there's no point in doing this without the habits, there's three requirements that we talk a lot about. One is to make it part of your identity, especially as a coach or a leader in organizations, making it part of their daily routines, normalizing it and committing to it is huge. This is how we show up. These are the, we use our reset routines. We reflect after, we get mentally prepared before, and we're doing all three of those consistently as part of who we are and what we stand for. And it's the identity of this elite athlete. We work on the driver, not just the car. Massive um, benefits, creates habits long-term. Two, keep it simple, right? And I kind of left it pretty simple there with three main strategies because we always come back to those. We have all these other things and, and that help those three, um, but we want to make sure athletes are doing it. We do not want to overcomplicate the mental side of the game. The mental side of the game is often trying to, you know, simplify, you know, streamline, clarify, give simplicity and focus. Um, and it's really easy to overcomplicate it. So it's about doing what's best for you. What's best for the athlete, um, make it effective and make it sticky, make it last. Um, because you know, a lot of athletes will look for those quick fixes. They find something, they do it for a little bit that starts to work, but it doesn't stick and they don't keep doing it. And they go back to square one, you know, a month later, a few weeks later. Now, the other big thing that's important is not doing this alone. So building a support team, whether it's encouraging parents to understand that the whole team to work with each other, having a, I know the Boston Bruins are doing it. They have like accountability partners within the team, you know, having support staff around, bringing in mental skills coaches, you know, mental performance coaches to help. Or some athletes obviously will hire us to, to work with them or join our group programs and uh, work. So they don't have to do it alone. And so it's just like you have skills coaches and physical conditioning coaches. You want to make sure people are understanding the importance of the mental side of the game. This is another huge way to make it a long-term impact and habit and becomes part of your culture that we work on our mindset and the importance of that. So that is a quick summary, how we can work on our mindset to get the most out of our car. And a lot of us are just focusing way too much time and energy on cars and too many athletes have great cars and not a great driver. What's the point of having a great car without a great driver? Uh, it's, you know, it's a lot of it goes to waste. 
So let's shift gears into the second area, which is now we're getting the most out of the, each athlete. Well, how can we get the sum of its parts to be greater uh, than the whole, right? So one plus one equaling three. And which is not great math, but it's a great concept to highlight leadership and transformational uh, coaching. And I'm going to talk about this in two ways. First, I'm going to spend most of the time because then it overlaps to part two is leading yourself, right? We, we think so much as how can we lead others and not enough reflecting on how can we lead ourselves. And so we're going to talk a lot about that and the same concepts will apply. And then B is leading the team. And so these are some foundational things. And we have a coaching program called the Beyond the X and O's monthly workshops. And it's a series. And one of the first things, and we're gonna, I'm going to give some, uh, allude to some of the strategies in that is this transformational leadership and this leading yourself, which is asking why, what's your purpose, what's your how in your process or your team's process and the what your vision. And so why, how, and what are three questions to reflect on for both yourself and your team. So I'll walk you through those here. And one of the ways, again, to really reinforce why start with yourself first as a leader and wherever you are in an organization, whether you're the GM, coach, you know, assistant coach, you know, working your way up uh, in some kind of hockey ops, we're all leaders in some aspect. And if you want to coach high performers, you want to impact a team and a team of high performers, then you need to be a high performer yourself. You can't ask this of others if you're not doing it yourself. And so when you're thinking this first question, what's your why? Not what the team's why, what's your why? What's your drivers? A lot of times our culture and our athletes and our leaders and coaches get this little backwards. We think it's about having more. Well, my why is to achieve more, to win more, to win the championship. And therefore I need to do more. And if I do more, then I'll have more. And if I train more and practice more and prepare more, I'll have more. And if I have more results and I do more of this, now that means I am being a great leader, a coach, GM, et cetera. But that's so backwards. The truth is you first choose to be a great leader, a great coach, and it's part of your why and it's the, the, the meaning and the joy of being a coach in and of itself, which therefore these are now the things that you do, your process, the how, which results in the outcomes of both you know, athlete development, performance, you know, relationships building, connection. These are the outcomes of this is not the why. And so it's a really, you know, difficult way that a lot of times we get it screwed up where we think, well, just because this is the goal and the result, that means that's why I do the process to get the goal. No, the why is actually some deeper purposes, intrinsic motives, what's meaningful in the sake of itself. And having that clarity first is really important. It's a choice that we make. We choose our why. And versus like, well, I want these things. Well, yeah, we all want to win and get results. But what's your unique why? Why do you love the game? Why do you love coaching? Why do you love what you do? What's unique about it? And answering that question, have some clarity around it, now becomes the, the cornerstone, the foundation to growing from there and being an effective leader. And then you want your athletes to have this kind of mindset. This is the intrinsic motivation 101. So this is how it flows. And a really cool way to, to think about this, because this not only impacts your performance, um, for your teams, for your for yourself, and for your athletes, it's also about your overall well being. And a cool, really big study looked at this is when you focus on just goals that are external, that success and praise and the the results, it doesn't make you happier. Right? I've worked with executives going from like three million to sixty million. It's like I thought I'd be happier when I got this. It doesn't make you happier. It does not increase well being. So dash, but it can increase ill being. You're just stressed out by achieving more, by winning more, by getting those results. And so it doesn't mean to not want these things, but it's not all about that. And so instead, what the flip side is, is to grow, create, and can contribute. And one of the ways to then understand this is when we focus on these more internal reasons why we do it, to growth, the meaningful of the game, we actually enjoy ourselves more. It's increase in well-being and decrease in well-being. We're less stressed out. And so again, we can want both, but which one are we prioritizing? Which one's our real true why? And the other one's a goal and result, not necessarily the why. And this is a, a simple way to apply this to sport, which is really common. Like think of like as a coach and your team wins and they play really well and they learn and grow. Ideal situation. But the common one is B, they lose, but they really played well. They did the process well, they're learning and growing. But like, okay. And then there's option C, which is like they win, but they really probably didn't deserve it and they didn't play well and they're just playing a weak team or the other team made some mistakes. So it's like when we look at B and C, which one's more meaningful? Which one would we rather have? 
and we know it's going to be beneficial for us and it's more meaningful. It's B. We choose B over C. Obviously, we want A, but you're not always going to get A. And so that, again, reinforces it's this side that matters more. This is where the why is. This is the result. And so that's the first question. Why do you coach? And we'll reflect on why, what's your purpose of your team and your athletes, why? But start with yourself. Two is how do you coach? And one of the really cool things um, to reinforce is like, are we focused on the process? Which really, again, reinforces some of the why. But think of like two teams in the final. And what's your process as a coach? And what do you, what do you value? And how do you communicate that? And what are the little behaviors that you do? Well, both teams are going to be highly skilled. Um, they could be really high skilled. They really developed a lot. They're being respectful. They've developed strong relationships. They develop a lot of life skills and confidence, resilience. We're getting the most out of their driver and their car. They contribute to the community. They fell more in love with the game and they're both dialed in. Play their hearts out even in the game. Well, still one team's going to win team and one team's going to lose. This is all about the mastery approach. John Wooden 101. This is your how as a coach. So is one team successful and one team's a bunch of losers? Are you a bad coach if you lost? Like, obviously not. But have you defined your process, your how? And a lot of times we don't. And do we even define the team's process and how? And we'll get to that in a second. And the ways to think about this is setting standards for yourself as a coach. You know, I believe in this. This is how I want to coach. That the process matters more than the result. That I'm focusing on, you know, the respect, the, the things that matter, not necessarily whether we win or lost the championship. And obviously, in, in the research shows, by doing that, you're actually more likely to win, right? And, and that's why, like, as an athlete, they focus more on the process, the more likely to score and, and perform well. But doing that as a coach first, you got to lead by example. So I believe this. And then what does that mean for you? And what does the action, the behavior look like? This process step, this how has to be there's, there's values and principles, and then there's actions. And then there's also like the anti-action or what it is not. And this comes from Todd Herman's work, uh, helped you know, refine this process for me. But the, the concept for you to reflecting on is clarifying your process. Another way to think about this is also preventing mixed signals. You know, if I want my team to be X, then I need to be X. Like I need to be composed. I want my players to be composed. And that's, you know, Brett Ledbetter's uh, giving me some good insight on that one. And a, a quick little example of this is, um, you know, uh, from what's this? Uh, uh, old school is a movie. And it's a really funny clip. Will Ferrell, you know, saying one thing, but acting in a completely different way, which we've all been there as coaches. made a great effort so far let's just keep it up that's right we can't have anyone freak out out there okay we've got to keep our composure we've come too far there's too that's much that's to no one to freak out keep our composure all right i think the sound worked but anyways point being you've got to have alignment you've got to have clarity around your process and then not sending mixed signals and so we've covered your why your process, your how. And the last part is your what, the vision. And like, what does it look like? And this is really important. A lot of people will often start here and there's nothing wrong with starting here. But remember, the foundation is actually here, which is why I start here first and then go to here. And then definitely you want to see really some tangible results and the direction you're going, that you're working towards. And so that could be championships and some results there, but it's also connection, growth, how athletes are returning to your team. So it's looking at yourself and your team in one, five, 10 years. What would you be seeing? What would others be saying? What would be happening? And these are great questions to reflect on. What's your vision of yourself? What's your, you know, your goal in a way, your long-term vision, what's, you know, drives you and you're working towards. Um, but don't lose sight of this as your why. Your why is actually the values in and of itself. And this is the manifestation of it. So that's taking care of yourself. And then you can literally flip the script and don't just jump to this, do it on yourself first. Then you can do the same thing with your team. This is huge for going beyond the X and O's and one plus one equals three. And there's no point if you don't know yourself to then get your team to better know themselves and their definition of success or their purpose, you know, what's their standards um, and how your team acts and their process and your team's vision. All right. I'll briefly explain some key concepts for that appliance to your team. One first and foremost is Understanding that if you're an inch off on landing, no big deal. But if you're an inch off on takeoff, you'll miss the moon by a million miles. And so it's so important that you start things off on the right foot with your team. Doing this early on, getting really clear on your why, your process, your vision, so important. 
And a really good line from Brett was so many coaches underdefine, which leads them to overmanaging. So if you're underfining what your standards are with your team, what is your, you know, what's required, what's the, the definition of success, your process, this is how we operate. So both like, this is what it means. So we're going to be very um, detail oriented. That means we get, you know, stops and starts, pox out. And here's what exactly it looks like. At the blue line, we make these type of plays. It does not look like this. You know, <laughs> it's very clearly laid out. Um, there was a thing about Barry Trotz the other day, details, details, details. He's really good at defining their process, their game plan. It was very clear. It wasn't kind of ambiguous. And so really good um, part when you're talking about the how and the process, have it well defined. And so I often call this also your definition of success because this is what really matters. This is the journey, the experience in itself. It's the manifestation of the why. And then this is the, the end result that's kind of legs after you know, we go on to championships or win more and, and other areas, but know their why and it's the collective why but really get and it's some great exercises here to define your standards or your expectations. I prefer standards because standards are more process that you can, you know, manage versus expectations are, are black and white. And there's some things you might want to have some, some expectations on. And then when it comes to defining your vision, think about John Wooden right? He knew what success was for him. He knew what the end result was. And, um, and this could very much be your, your process. So not just actually the vision that your process, which, cause these are values and these are actions that are measurable. And a good example where, you know, I talk about some of the research when I was coaching, um, back in, when I was in school, do my PhD, et cetera, it was like, I knew what success was not, it wasn't just about the results, but I didn't really clarify then my process and the how, and so then I was kind of lost and I actually, so I just copied John Wooden because <laughs> why not? Right. And I made my own, this is our pyramid that we made about respect and then define what that was. What I didn't do and should have done back then was better um, define what are the behaviors of that. So we kind of define what it means to be respectful, but then what are the exact behaviors and examples and what does it not look like? And that's really now black and white labeled and a lot clearer to fall through. Same with the rest of these. And so that would have then been ours. So I encourage you, how do you define success? Really get into the detail and that process of your team standards. And I'll make this clear. All of these things are done with your team. If you just dictate them to, you know, one of the, a huge um, area that I'm not getting into today is autonomy supportive, which is like, it's coach led. We want to have team led and it depends on the age and the maturity of your athletes, but you can get them involved in the process of, you know, their why, your purpose, your vision, your definition of success or your process. The more you do that, the better. And when you pull all this together, we're now getting that one plus one equals three. So again, we're just scratching the surface here, but the idea is, you know, that concepts, it gets the most out of your team because you're leading yourself, you're true with your own purpose and, and process. And then you're able to get your team aligned. You're going to get more out of the sum of the parts, more than the sum of the parts, one plus one equals three. And as well, especially again, if you add in the mindset piece that we talked about, you're going to get the most out of each car and the drivers, and they're all now working together. You've got this. This is why the beyond the X and O's is so important. You're now becoming that best coach, optimizing the experience, getting more to your team and building momentum and a cycle and a culture that then breeds itself. And so there's these soft skills of mindset, et cetera. And it's just putting some time and energy into working on them. I encourage you to reach out. Hopefully you found some, something there. Uh, enjoy it. I appreciate you listening. Um, that's our email. A couple of things to note as well. We have workshops that we do. There's an ongoing one that's beyond the X and O's. It's all about the soft skills of leadership. We touch on different topics. You can find that on our website. As well as we'll have an upcoming one in August. Uh, they call the mental toughness playbook for coaches where we're really diving in and on going behind the scenes of how we specifically help athletes get out of their head and into the zone and go full detail into that as well. So I give you some uh, tips today that hopefully uh, you find useful, reach out if you're interested or, or you'll stay tuned on our website um, for these workshops as well. Thank you very much and take care.